it's rained all morning here at the sawmill. No surprise right there. It rains every day. And I get a lot of questions about why you're not working out in the rain. Well, I can work in the rain, that's fine, but I can't take these cameras out in the rain, so I can't really show you guys what I'm doing. So uh, that's the reason I don't do a lot of work out here in the rain. I, I kind of do other stuff when it's raining that doesn't require filming because, like I said before, these cameras are expensive and taking them out in the rain is just not a good idea. But anyways, we're going to finally start this drying shed today, and uh, the rest of the day should be pretty good weather. There's no more rain supposed to occur today, or at least that's what they say. Two quick things here before we get started. The first thing is, the voting ends tomorrow for the FedEx Small Business Grant. So I appreciate you guys that are voting for me over there. There's a link down below to that contest. Just follow that link and it just takes about five seconds to put a vote in for me. And like I said, it ends tomorrow, so in about a week we'll know if we made the top 100 or not. And the second thing is, I really appreciate you guys on Patreon. You guys are awesome. You guys are helping support this channel. It's really appreciated. And uh, if you guys are interested in Patreon, there's a link down below that website also. It helps keep this channel going. Can't believe it's not raining. It rains every day. Clear skies today, though. So, and check out this hat. Ain't that nice? If you guys aren't members of the Forestry Forum, I don't know what you're waiting on, because if you're interested in sawmilling and stuff that I'm doing on the channel, that's where I learn most of my stuff from. And uh, this is a new hat they offer over there. They started making, and uh, that's nice. But anyways, check out the forestry forum. Link down below to that also. A lot of good guys over there doing a lot of good sawmill and stuff. A lot more stuff that I'm doing here. And uh, if you have any questions about sawmill and I can't answer them, you can go there and somebody there is going to have an answer for you. So just to explain a few things here before we get started, I had a question about lumber while I was buying wood for this project, and here's the reason why. This project's just a little drying shed. It's 10 feet long, it's six foot deep. There's gonna be about an eight foot roof on it. It's a little lean-to. It's gonna look like uh, what you would see like a little firewood shed look like if you saw somebody putting firewood up to have it dry for the season. Now the floor of this shed is gonna be a wooden deck up on some concrete blocks. Now this stretcher is nothing fancy. This is just to get the wood off the ground and into a nice area where it's gonna be protected from rainfall, but still allow for good air movement to air dry the lumber until I put it into the kiln. Now this is gonna be a multiple video series here on how I build this thing, part one being today. I'm not sure how many it's gonna take. Probably two or three videos should do it. It shouldn't take too long to build this thing. And uh, here's why I bought this wood. I hate using pressure treated wood, and this is gonna be some outside wood. It needs to be protected from the elements, but pressure treated and salt treated, there's nothing wrong with it. I just hate the looks of it, because you can't paint it, you can't stain it. It's got that greenish look to it. It's kind of nasty, and I just, I'm not a fan of it at all. I've used it before, and I'll probably use it again in the future, but if I can get around it, I'm not gonna use it. Here's why I'm using store-bought lumber. In the truck bed, I got several two by 10 by 12s and two by 10 by 10, and it's all yellow pine, kiln dried from Lowe's. Of course, it's been kiln dry, but it's probably still about 15 or 16 percent, maybe a little bit higher. Some of it felt kind of light. It's odd when you go through the lumber at Lowe's, a lot of it's real light and a lot of it's pretty heavy. You can usually tell the stuff that's been dried pretty good and the stuff really didn't get dried very good at all. I tried to go through the stack and get the lightest stuff possible. So I got some pretty good pine here. And this is going to be the decking for the drying shed. It's going to be the floor joist and the, all the framing that's required for the bottom of the drying shed. And the reason I did not mill my own wood up for is this. This is pretty cheap stuff. This was less than $80 in the truck bed, counting the cinder blocks and all my fasteners I had to buy. And if I had used my own wood, it would have been green and it would have shrunk. And when you're drying wood, you want a pretty stable area to dry it on. If I'd have built this out of green wood, it's gonna shrink over time and dry. And it's not gonna be very level after a while and it will eventually get dry, but then at that point, one end could have dried faster than the other, and the end grain could have been open on one side that's not open on the other. So you might have a building that's nice and level on the bottom, but due to drying defects, it could cup. You could have a floor that's totally off. So if you put a stack of green slabs on top of a floor that's not really level, it's going to dry to the shape of that floor. So if you got a floor that's got a cup in it, well, that wood is on top of it like this. It's going to dry like the floor. It's going to mirror what it's on. That's why I went ahead and bought store-bought wood for the flooring, because I know it's dried or decently dried, it's a lot better than green, and it's not gonna move a whole lot. It's gonna be pretty level after I build it a year from now. Now later on, I will check this in about a month after it's been out here in the elements. I may have to put a few shims in it to bring up maybe one or two sides of it, but it's not gonna be a big deal as it would if I use green wood. So that's why I'm using that, and it's cheap, 
Not real expensive, less than $80 to buy all the framing lumber here for the bottom. And now for the rest of this structure, the post on each corner and all the roof system, that's gonna be green wood. I'll be sawing it out of white oak tomorrow here on the channel, we'll video that. I have four four by fours on each corner made out of white oak, true four by fours. And I'll also mill up all the rafters and everything I need for the ceiling. And I'm also gonna put some sheathing around it. I'll leave a lot of gaps for airflow, but try to keep out a little bit of that blow in when the rain comes through here if I can. So I'm going to use green wood for those components because I'm not going to worry about them drying and moving a little bit because it's not going to be a big deal because it will not affect the actual stack of wood that's underneath it. The floor is your number one concern right there. You've got to keep that nice and level or as good as you can. So that's why we're using dried wood. Think about it this way. This drying shed, I'm going to build it to hold a thousand board feet of lumber, a thousand board feet of walnut. You're looking at $15,000 if it's nice slabs, maybe even a little bit higher than that, just in the raw form of slabs. So less than $100 for, for a nice floor is not a bad investment at all. It's one of our biggest problems here at the sawmill is keeping this kiln full, because these slabs take up to a year to air dry to less than 20%. Guys, something we never done here is, is a uh, this is some kind of Japanese or Chinese way of preparing wood. I'm not sure if it's Japanese or Chinese. I don't think it really matters. And it's called a uh, Suzuki bon or Shuji bon or something. I can't pronounce it. Can't even begin to act like I know how to say it. But anyways, guys, it's a way of burning wood to make it better off when it's out in the elements like this because this pine is untreated. So we want to do something to it to make it last a lot longer out here in the weather. It's going to be covered under a nice tin roof, but I also want to make sure it's here for a while. And this is a method I found while doing some research. And I saw guys in other videos do this in the past. John Neiman Tools done this, and uh, the My Self Reliance guy, Sean James, he's been doing this on his building. Pretty much consists of just burning the wood, scraping it off, and putting some oil on it. We'll be using linseed oil for that. But according to those guys and what I've read, it makes wood last a long time once outside. In my ongoing effort here on this YouTube channel, I always try to keep it real, not to make it look like everything's always perfect and works out well. Fitting on this will not fit on my 20 pound propane tank. Picked it up Friday, and this is the first time I've had it out of the box, but this will not fit on the propane tank. So. Another delay here. If it ain't rain, it's always something else. So let's go run up to the store and get some small little uh, Coleman tanks to hook this thing to. I don't think it's going to take very much anyways. It never fails. There's always a delay. And these other channels, it cracks me up. It looks like everything's always perfect and everything just goes as planned. But this stuff happens all the time. And for you guys out there working for a living, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If something always comes up and you need something else, you have to run back to the store again. So, it happens here too. Yes, I'd do it all again Sir, I wouldn't change a thing All these years I thought that I had lived But I hadn't And now I've got the best of friends These are the best times of our lives We're picking tunes and getting stoned 
day our kids are gonna pass us on by and we'll be packed away on a shelf and long gone. Times is tough, I won't lie. Yes, I can barely pay the rent. But you can tell it when you look me in the eyes that I'll make it. Cause I've got the best of friends. These are the best times of our lives. We're living life through a song. All right now, guys, from what I've read, you can use any kind of uh, oil for this. Some people even use chicken oil. I'm going to use boiled linseed oil because it's cheap. And it goes a pretty long way. So, let's see how this looks here. Gives it a nice color to it. Of course, linseed oil makes anything look good. This kind of reminds me of like putting oil on a uh, axe handle or just a wooden tool handle when you put linseed oil on it. Get that same effect. You get that nice color to it, that nice finish. That's pretty good. Probably too good for an outside lumber drying shed, but hopefully this will make it last a whole lot longer. 